Welcome to Passion Unlimited Podcast. I am your host, psychotherapist, author, and founder of Fearless Love, Gianni Adamo. Recently, I have had the opportunity to, um, to speak to a couple different organizations that have asked me to come in and do a webinar or do webinars for their organizations and companies around the topic of managing stress, managing anxiety and depression over these challenging times. Um, so for my podcast, being that I am focused on a relationship reboot series for these, uh, for, se uh, for season three, I decided I would wanna talk about this topic of managing your stress, anxiety, and depression as a couple because with the pandemic, obviously this is why these organizations have reached out to me. You know, so many people are experiencing so much distress and that's being manifested at home. It's being manifested in the school, it's not being manifested in the workplace and people are getting you know, depressed. They're eating a lot. They are not feeling happy. They're feeling blue. And obviously this affects you and in, in your relationship as well. And in my experience, your relationship has the strongest place for you to actually feel whole and complete sound and a place for you to kind of come back and rebalance. So anyways, so my, um, I wanna you know, let you know that it is normal for you to feel overwhelmed during these unprecedented times. It is also normal for you to feel anxious and fearful or sad. You might feel like you've been, been crying a lot and you don't even know why. Maybe some of you are feeling angry or some of you are feeling irritable or just um, a pervasive powerlessness. All this is happening because we're feeling a lot of stress. Things that are usually normal for us are no longer normal, like going to school and feeling safe doesn't necessarily feel normal anymore. Now we have to feel like we have to keep social distance, we have to wear a mask in order to protect ourselves, in order to protect our families. And being that we're social beings, anything that interrupts our connections, anything that interrupts our relationships, and anything that interrupts our normalcy creates stress. Our brain likes familiarity. It likes things to be predictable. When things are easy um, for you to predict and to feel that, um, you know, like you know what to expect today. You expect to go into the office, you expect to do your work or and come back home and maybe prepare dinner and maybe play with the children. That feels normal. But when we have to now prioritize our well being and preserve our families from getting infected, and if they haven't, um, uh, infected by the COVID-19, that obviously has caused a lot of distress in a household as well, has turned you guys upside down. So anyways, stress. Stress is an emotional or physical tension. It is also thoughts that make you feel frustrated, angry, or nervous. When that happens, the amygdala gets triggered. It sends enough signals to start secreting the stress hormones and cortisol. Stress can also be positive and basically it will warn you of dangers. It'll help you complete deadlines and help you to create muscles as well. And there are two ways that your brain can get stuck in a very high stress place and that's chronic stress. So that's when we don't manage and don't recognize that we have accumulated a lot of stress throughout our lives. And that's usually the case for most of us. And we're always operating from a place of secreting all this stress hormones. So people who are like workaholics and they're always working, they you know come home late and they still work from home and they feel like 
you know, all the 400 emails that have come in in the last, you know, over the weekend, they're still stressed out over all those 400 emails that came in over the weekend and they can't seem to unplug. If also, if your brain, your brain can also get stuck in survival mode when there's a crisis. It, a crisis basically pushes you from a place that is familiar and predictable, as we mentioned earlier, and it pushes you to a place that you are where your routines can no longer be done. So there's a disruption to your routines. So basically, the brain loves routines, the brain loves predictability, and anytime, either by choice or by a crisis or, or just chronic stress that's in your life, the brain cannot get back to that place of familiarity and homeostasis. It kind of gets stuck in the survival mode. And so basically when it gets stuck in survival mode and now it affects the parts of your brain that affect your memory, that affects your emotions, and it impedes, from, impedes you from thinking clearly. A healthy brain is one that's set to explore the world, it's one that you can grow. It's one that you can evolve. It's one that you can engage fully with your environment, whether it's with your family members, with your coworkers. You're in the present moment. You are in the now. You take time to plan for your future and you may take time to reflect on your past and maybe even learn from your past, which is all wonderful, productive things. But overall, you live in the present and you're capable to pivot. You're capable of moving and shifting and changing your mind without feeling guilty. Um, the, another, your brain is also set to look for signs of dangers and problems. So basically, one of the primary functions of your brain is a survival organ. And especially once you move out of the, you know, being a baby and you start moving into uh, maybe beyond five or six years old, you now start to recognize that the world may not be as safe as you thought, but you, you know, you can start recognizing dangers and maybe like, you know, that you're not supposed to stick your finger in the electric outlet because that can hurt you or harm you. So you may no longer do that. You are now trained to know like you can't run after your ball into the streets, you know that a car can hit you. So like now your brain knows, it's starting to get trained and understand that there are dangers in this world. And now your brain's main function is not just to explore this world and to grow and evolve, now its main function starts to come into keeping you safe. And ultimately, as an adult, that is one of the primary functions as for your brain, to keep you safe, to look for dangers and problems and get away from those problems and dangers. Okay, so what happens with a traumatized brain is that it has gotten stuck in the fight, flight, or freeze state. So that's called the survival brain. And if you are stuck with, you know, going to the refrigerator back and forth and eating when you're not even hungry, if you're streaming programs, if you are back to watching the news and you can't get away from that. But when you like, you realize like, why are you keep repeating certain behaviors? And you don't, you know, like, they're not really even edifying you. They're not really blessing you. They're not really adding much to your life, uh, but you seem to be stuck there. So in couples, you were also stuck in having the same fights over and over again. And you're like, well, why are we having the same fights over and over again when we know we don't see this particular situation eye to eye. You guys have two different views on, you know, on, you know, healthy eating or exercise or rearing the children. There's many things that couples will not come to see eye to eye in, but we just learn to accept that, you know, and respect that we each have different views. Um, so anyways, in reference to stress and stress management, so chronic stress. Chronic stress is exposure to stress that becomes 
repetitive over time and it leads to health problems such as anxiety and depression, heart disease, cancer, insomnia, obesity, and ultimately for, to early death. So if you are not managing your chronic stress, and if you're not trying to eliminate your chronic stress, this is not going to fare well for your relationship. It's not going to fare well for your health either. Some examples of chronic stress where couples get stuck in is, the first one is financial turmoil. Technically, um, supposedly the, the number one reason for marriages to collapse supposedly is financial turmoil and financial, um, basically, unemployment, not able to provide. And maybe I don't get to see those clients that much because I am an out-of-network uh, mental health provider, so my clients are private pay. So I have not really seen a ton of those clients. Normally, all of my clients have communication issues around whatever topics they've got. So, but financial turmoil and finances supposedly is the number one reason for divorce. I know that the states that have a high unemployment rate do also correlate with high divorce rates. And maybe that's where they're getting their data from. Um, however, I do get clients who have financial turmoils or, or who have been through financial turmoils, but they're not my number one. They're, that's not the biggest problem that I've seen in my practice. Okay, but if you are living your life with high debt or just living your life with debt, know that that is a chronic stressor. So anything that has to do with money <laughs> and arguments around money would become a chronic stressor in your relationship or in your life. And that's something that you may want to take a look and try to come together and maybe you might need to take a, um, a course um, together so that you can come together around the topic of money. I know that Dave Ramsey offers a fantastic uh, workshop uh, or classes around money, specifically for couples. Hi I highly recommend that any couple, no matter where you are in your life together, beginning, middle, or you know, you're now um, empty nesters, that coming together, seeing money, you know, coming together around how you manage money, how you save your money, that is so super important to start eliminating some of your chronic stress. Other forms of chronic stress come in from illnesses, chronic illnesses like the back pain, the neck situation, the, you know, that doesn't go away, the, the migraines that don't go away, they keep coming back. Um, you have diabetes, you have a whole bunch of Lyme disease. There's lots of people with autoimmune diseases that really doesn't go away. So having a handle around chronic illnesses is super important that you are managing that well for yourself because if not, this is now bringing that chronic illness into a chronic stress into the relationship as well. Um, obviously, work-related issues, if you don't like your job, if you don't like your boss, if you can't find a job, if you're unemployed right now through this pandemic, that creates chronic stress in the relationship. So, and I'm listing these so that you are aware of all the things that come into the home and come into your life that causes chronic stress that ultimately, if it's not managed, it's going to disrupt your happiness, it's going to disrupt your health and ultimately disrupt your relationship and maybe even your longevity, depending on how much stress you're bringing on. So also chronic stress, a form of chronic stress is having an unhappy or unhealthy marriage. Um, having a healthy marriage is actually the healthiest thing you can do for your life. It really it comes in as number one, as the best thing you can have in your life. If you could have only one great thing in your life, and that would be a great marriage, because if you and your partner love each other, support one another, and offer respect and support to one another, 
then you have the foundation for exceptional health all around, not just emotional health, but physical health as well. Um, chronic stress also comes in the form of divorce. So for those of you who are considering divorce, that's a form of chronic stress. Going through a divorce is chronic stress, and it takes years to kind of rebalance yourself, especially if you were in a long-term marriage. For those of you who are caregiving, who are taking care of children, especially young ones, and taking care of parents, and, even, and now with this pandemic, a whole bunch of you are caring for your partners or your children who have the who have um, contracted, you know, COVID-19. So that now adds more chronic stress to the household. Loneliness is a huge one for chronic stress. So you don't have to be single to feel lonely. The worst kind of loneliness comes when you are married and you're supposed to have a partner that's loyal, committed, and gets your back, and that's not happening. So that's a huge form of chronic stress. So when these things are not managed, what happens is they become a layering effect. So one thing layers upon the next thing. And you now have just so many areas of your life that's pulling you into so many different directions and it's so overwhelming. And unfortunately, when that happens and you haven't been able to manage the stressors well, you're either gonna move into the place of living your life with anxiety or living your life with depression um, or, or a combination of both of these. And, and we will say that anxiety is, is, um, is just your body's way of signaling that something is wrong. So a good way to determine whether you're not you're dealing with anxiety or not is to recognize if you're always feeling exhausted, restless, struggling to relax. If you're consistently worrying and ruminating and overthinking, afraid that something bad is going to happen or you know that um, you can't sleep, you, you can't fall asleep, you can't stay asleep, or you're just not feeling refreshed in the morning, trouble concentrating tension, especially like in your neck, shoulders, back, head, um, your belly. Sometimes you feel like you're always like holding on to something in your body all the time, your arms. And sometimes too with anxiety, some of the signs of anxiety is um, sweating, heart pounding, shallow breathing, trembling. These are all signs of anxiety. Um, other signs of anxiety, excuse me, would be if you may be dealing with depression. Instead, some people might go into the depression side. And by the way, if you're feeling, if you're dealing with anxiety, sometimes the anxiety is masked by you just being irritable and explosive. So please watch out that when you're angry, ask yourself, and if you're being explosive and just irritable, ask yourself, am I masking just me? being anxious and being nervous. Because if you are, let's get rid of the anger, let's move the irritability out of the way, face the anxiety, face the discomfort, face the fear, and address what it is that's causing all of that for you. Okay, some signs of depression, I wanna give you some signs of depression because sometimes people don't move into the anxious world, they'll move into the depression mode. And the depression is you have lost interest in pleasure activities, such as if you used to play golf, now you don't want to play golf. Or if you used to swim, you don't want to go swimming. If you used to like to go to parks, you don't want to go to the park. You, anything that used to bring you joy and happiness in your world, it's just like nothing brings you joy or happiness in your world anymore. There's a probability that you're either gaining weight or losing weight without you trying to be in a diet. Also with depression, there's also trouble sleeping, just like with anxiety. There's either too much sleeping or not enough sleeping once again. 
there is a loss of energy and an increase and increased fatigue. You seem to end up pacing more, wringling of your hands, slow, uh, slowed movements and speech, and feelings of worthlessness and guilt. You end up apologizing over everything and anything, and you're just, you know, feeling like you're just overall a mistake. So there's also difficulty with thinking and concentrating, making decisions. This is not a time where you want to be making a lot of decisions. And of course, also with uh, signs of depression is the suicidal thoughts and thoughts of death. So my best recommendation when you are a couple that you are dealing with all of this stress in your life, you're dealing with multiple layers of stressors from financial to children to COVID-19 to employment. Um, maybe, you know, there's stressors coming out of the house because maybe there is mold, maybe there um, there are other issues in your house that need to be taken care of. Um, the first, my first recommendation is take inventory. Take a look at all the different layers of stressors in your personal life as the wife or as the girlfriend, if you were cohabitating. Um, take a look at all the personal stress that your partner is also um, carrying. So take inventory. I, I want you guys to get clear and be in a place of reality with one another. I remember um, from a long time ago, I had some friends who are very good. They're very good people, but they had so much stressors coming at them from every different, different direction. They were still in their, probably their mid twenties. They were already married. They had a child and they lost their house they lost their business he was an entrepreneur they lost all their investments and here they are this young family in their mid-20s and they're two like i said fabulous great heart loving warm family people and those two had so much stress because of all the financial situations he had some health issues as well that they actually kind of like imploded and they actually, one of them had to be taken out, um, you know, because the police had to be called because their fights were so reckless and crazy that it ended up becoming like a domestic violence situation in their, that, and that was still in their early, um, excuse me, in their mid twenties. I can tell you that they've evolved from all of that and they've, you know, healed from all of that. They've also regained all of their losses and they are still married today. They have a fabulous family. They you know, moved on from that level of distress. So what happened to them? Two loving, great human beings that with all the hopes in the world, they get married, they have a child, and then all of a sudden, 20 million things collapse around them. And they've lost, they, at that point, they had lost everything. They did not have enough coping skills. They did not have mature communication skills. They did not have mature conflict resolution skills. They did not have enough skill sets alone by themselves to handle the distress and how the world around them was all collapsing. So they ended up fighting each other in the worst way. Like I said, one of them had to be taken by the police because it became a domestic violence situation. So, you know, how do, and maybe your relationship is not that bad and hopefully it will never be that bad. So how do we avoid you know, going to those extreme places where now we turn against those that we love because that's exactly what happened. They felt so pulled into so many different directions that they turned against each other. As you guys who are listening to Passion Unlimited podcast, as you know, these last six weeks has all been on your communication skills and conflict resolution skills and the last episode I believe I presented on was on the uh, date nights. So what I would say to you, as you're trying to manage so much, you're trying to manage mental health issues, financial issues, you know, keeping everybody abreast, 
my best advice would be to start to create self-care practices individually and together jointly. The most powerful thing on this planet we have is called love. There's nothing more powerful than our capacity to love each other and to love ourselves. So when a couple turns to each other and decides that they're going to really become each other's number one, get your, get your partners back, become their best cheerleader, nothing can stop you guys. Nothing. Because now you are prioritizing your partner and their needs. So I suggest that you would start creating some self-care rituals that you would want to take care of each other together. So what does that mean? Maybe that what that means is that you learn to exercise together, that you take baths together, that you cook together, or at least you know somebody standing there washing the dishes and you know setting the table while the person the other person is in the kitchen cooking so just finding ways to start collaborating and feeling like you guys are on the same team together a lot of the times when people feel overwhelmed and depressed underneath all of that what they're feeling is completely isolated and alone so if you can help your partner feel connected to you, if you can allow that partner to feel to know, and to know that you've got their back, that you see all their strengths, that you appreciate them, and that you're so grateful for them, and that you want to spend as much time as possible with them, these things will most likely impact them. Um, you know, I have some neighbors who are now older and I ran into the husband last week and he tells me that his wife suffers from depression. And I know that his wife was also instrumental in getting him to walk because I walk up and down the stairs because I live in a condo and I live on, on one of the higher floors, but I always use the stairwell. So one of these days, one of those days I ran into him probably like a couple of years ago and he looks at me as I'm going up the stairs and he's coming down the stairs and he's like oh hi and he's like demoralized and I'm like hi how are you blah 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 and he's like oh my wife is making me walk he was so sweet and he's so cute and I'm like how and I'm inside of me, I'm like, how fantastic! His wife is making him walk because she cares about him, she wants him to live a long life. So, anyway, so recently I just ran into him again, and he's like, Oh, she deals from depression. I didn't know that she dealt with, with depression, and he was gonna go to the beach because she didn't want to go to the beach with him. So, we had a conversation about you know, trying to see if he can convince her to come out with him and just sit. She doesn't have to walk. She doesn't have to do anything. But just to go outside and get some vitamin D with him would be just fantastic. So for those of you who are dealing with a depressed partner, maybe just helping them to know that you love them no matter what and that their company is more important to you than anything else um, allowing them to feel like they're useful in your life and they have a purpose in your life, allowing them to know that um, their life matters um, and that your greatest joy in this world is to see them happy because that is the truth. When we love someone, our greatest joy is to see our partner happy. So as we wrap up our time for today, I just want to encourage you to keep reminding yourself and your partner that they are the most valuable person in your life and that nothing in this world is more valuable to you than them. Because for those who have anxiety, those who are dealing with depression, you know, they're, they're just feeling deep down inside, they feel completely alone, isolated, and they may feel like they, if everything falls on their shoulders and that they have to be responsible for everything. So just by you coming alongside of them, not blaming, not calling them, you know, like they're having a pity party or anything like that, 
just reminding them how much they're valued and how much they're loved. Maybe that's all they need was maybe you guys coming together to create some self-care habits and some hobbies and some share some interest together to go have some fun and maybe get some sunlight and some sunshine together because that's going to help um, to normalize the hormones that need to be produced and released in the brain to help them to feel happier and healthier. So anyways, I hope this has been, help this has been helpful. Please keep tuning in. I will be continuing on a relationship reboot series for season three of Passion Unlimited podcast to help you to go from surviving to thriving and love life and relationships. Please subscribe. You can find Passion Unlimited podcasts on all the different podcast stations from iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, and also on YouTube. You can find it under Fearless Love, which is my um, my business name, Fearless Love. If you would like a free 15-minute consultation, please contact me through fearlesslove.net and you can just click on the free 15-minute consultation. And just one more thing, um, for this fall, I'm looking to actually to start producing my audiobook of Passion Unlimited Podcast. Excuse me, my audiobook of, of uh, From Love Trauma to Fearless Love, which is my book. We have a copy right here, but I think it's backwards. From Love Trauma to Fearless Love. So, anyways, I'm going to be um, getting the audiobook done this fall, and hopefully, I'll, I'm looking to get it released by uh, for Halloween. Thank you.